Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So Republicans apparently, they like losing. And we knew that before, but we confirm this yet again because the RNC chairmanship election took place earlier today and Ronna McDaniel, a three-cycle loser whose messaging is awful, electoral strategy is awful, has won a resounding election victory. Yes, it was the most contentious RNC election in quite some time, that is true, but still, two-thirds, over two-thirds of the party believe that she, a three-cycle loser, was the right choice to lead the party for the next two years. Absolutely laughable. And I can't really say that I expected her to lose. I talked about this in the RNC documentary that I did about this race, which I still encourage you guys to go check out because it was a really cool video, put a lot of effort into it. And I mean, watching it now in retrospect really should just make you realize how badly the Republicans ended up dropping the ball yet again. Dylan got about a third of the delegates during the caucus vote, but not nearly enough. And the three cycle loser has won again. And this is embarrassing. And it just shows that the party is so out of touch with what the voters actually want. We could pull up the poll yet again. We could put it on the screen where we know that Ronna McDaniel or Ronna Romney McDaniel, don't let her retcon, she proudly used that maiden name her entire career until it was politically inconvenient for her to do so because she's very much a Romney. She's a part of the old guard of the GOP establishment. And the voters know this. There's a reason why Harmy Dillon led by an 86 to 14 margin over McDaniel. Voters want a change. Even Ron DeSantis, of all people, who, you know, has been accused of kind of being in bed with the big donors because they're trying to draft him in 2024. Even he said that Dylan was a better choice. And what do we know now? Apparently, the RNC delegates that have been the dinosaurs in the party for so, so long decided to go with the losing strategy because they don't care about you. They don't care about your family. They don't care about winning. They just care about upholding the status quo and not making their liberal uh, friends at these dinner parties mad. That's all these people care about. And as a result, what did they do? They went with the status quo, the three-time loser in McDaniel. It's like if you have an NFL coach that gets hired and then posts three abysmal seasons, especially when you have an easy schedule like what we have against a lot of people on the Democrat side, they would be fired by every organization, even some of the most incompetent organizations in the NFL, like the Browns or the Detroit Lions would fire that coach. It's pretty obvious. Politics is obviously something that's considered to be different than sports, but still what matters at this position is your ability to lead, which is represented by your ability to win. You can't do anything politically, ideologically wise to advance your ideology, to change society if you are unable to win elections. All politics are electoral politics in this country. Republicans, again, don't seem to understand that their strategy is not resonating with voters. The messaging is old. It's the 80s messaging, the 90s messaging, the whole Reagan era thing, the free market, socialism sucks, etc. I mean, we don't like socialism. Ideally, you have a market economy. We know that. But like that being your core messaging does not resonate with voters. That's not why Donald Trump won in 2016. That's not why Ron DeSantis is such a popular governor of Florida. That's not even why Youngkin won in the state of Virginia. They capitalized on issues that the base cared about. In Virginia, it was education. In Florida, it was the lockdowns and you know the anti-woke sentiment and just relatively what they view to be competent leadership. In terms of Trump, it was bringing immigration to the forefront, talking about how we need to do away with political correctness, talking about 
how we need to bring our jobs back and put America first. That message resonates with voters. Even J.D. Vance didn't campaign much and went up against one of the best candidates the Democrats could put up who vastly outspent him. Guess what? He won by around seven points this election cycle in a former swing state because he represented those values. And even he had problems with the base because a lot of people were questioning how he came to, you know, support those ideals because he was kind of a neocon in the past, whatever. Doesn't matter. Either way, if you run on something, you are going to be able to win if that is something that resonates with the base. And they don't understand that. And the other reason why they're losing is because of the fact that they don't know how to navigate our current election system as well. In states like Florida where they do it or Texas, their results are pretty impressive. Like, where the hell did that come from? But in a lot of places in this country, Michigan, Wisconsin, etc., it's just not there. And Dylan understands this. McDaniel didn't really say anything about it. Now, I will say that the silver lining about this may be the fact that because you had 57 delegates vote against McDaniel, Keep in mind, if they just had, I believe they needed approximately 28 more than that or so to vote against her, that in 2024, if they do lose, she's likely gone. So there is more pressure on her to be more competent in her approach to messaging, which I don't anticipate any changes, but maybe we might see some changes in her approach to electoral strategy. We'll have to wait and see. You can't trust a Romney regardless, so I'm not saying that, oh, I'm going to give her so much credit here. It doesn't matter. But it's just astounding how much a party can hate their voters. It's true. And I'm not exactly saying that they have to put up some random boomer from the state of Iowa and make them leave the RNC. Because that person probably doesn't understand how politics works and we believe in hierarchy for a reason and we believe in a representative form of leadership for a reason. But what I am saying is you need people that are competent, that are receptive to the base, that know how to actually get things done to save this country or get the ball rolling in the correct direction. And people in charge like Ronna McDaniel, Ronna Romney McDaniel, and the old guard GOP establishment don't do it. So congratulations to the 57 who stood their ground, did the right thing. But it's like you had no reason not to vote for Dylan. You had no reason not to. And of course, people will say, well, you know, she's on the Trumpian side. All these Trumpian candidates lost in the midterms. Well, I mean, they were not funded, first of all, properly whatsoever because the establishment wasted all of their money on the primary opponents in the primaries. There was none left for them in the general. They divided the party on purpose because they're fine with losing so long as they make the correct people look bad. But furthermore, it's also important to understand the fact that Dylan is somebody who is intelligent, who will navigate the electoral system properly, who will have the correct messaging moving forward. She's not, like I said, some random boomer from the state of Iowa or wherever who doesn't know what they're doing. She's somebody who's relatively sharp, intelligent, very strategic, and we know that, which is why this is not a good thing. And even their hero, the Electa Bros hero, Ron DeSantis, actually supported uh, Army Dillon over Ron and McDaniel, which was shocking. It was a soft endorsement, but it was an endorsement nonetheless. And believe it or not, he successfully outflanked Trump from the right on this issue because Trump is out there saying nothing. You have reports behind the scenes saying that his people are are going out there and whipping votes for McDaniel. I don't know to what extent that's true. I know he has some surrogates that are pro-McDaniel. He has some surrogates that are also pro-Dylan who are likely whipping votes for Dylan. But either way, the fact that Donald Trump said nothing, he's like saying, oh, we'll let them duke it out, and then congratulating McDaniel, it's not a good look for him. It's really not. You could make excuses or defend him. That's fine. But either way, this is not a good look, just like the support for McCarthy trying to do everything he could do to end the standoff before it was over. Like, if Trump wants to win in 2024, he's going to have to go up against these arguments that say, you know, you're out of touch with the base. Even if he's the better choice for the base still compared to somebody like Ron DeSantis, who will be funded by a lot of the bad actors for the wrong reasons, he's going to have to deal with these obstacles, and it's just not a good thing for him to do uh, regardless. So you have Ronna McDaniel, she's going out there and she's going to be there for another two years. And it just shows that this party, according to this Twitter thread right here, which is a good thread, the Republican Party is designed to fail because it's insulated from any consequences 
from their voters. And this is true. They purposely will do everything they can to shaft anybody who's the least bit uh, disillusioned with the status quo and with the GOP establishment. And they're not getting anywhere. The GOP establishment has countless electoral losses. Nobody ever wants to talk about them uh, whatsoever. Uh, But apparently they will do everything possible to perpetuate the narrative that they're the only ones who can win. They don't win anything either. McDaniel may have been endorsed by Trump for the post, but she is very much a standard generic Republican. And that's why we're losing. We keep losing. Even Ryan's Priebus at least got us some electoral wins. At least he did everything he could do to unite the party behind Trump in 2016. Ronna McDaniel is incompetent. She's just a loser and a sorry excuse for a leader. And they're not the opposition party. They're the outer party. And this is true. And they're going to be destined to become a regional party if they keep going down this pathway. They will be. And it's sad. But you have poor leadership in there. That poor leadership is going to be instilled for another two years. And then who knows what's going to happen. If they narrowly get by in 2024, because let's say the Democrats decide to shoot themselves in the foot more than the Republicans are doing, which is a possibility. And let's say maybe they sort of kind of learn how to use the electoral system in like one or two more states. Okay, well, maybe we'll get a minor victory in 2024, or maybe we will see Trump return to form and he'll go out there and win, or if he doesn't get the nomination, who knows, DeSantis finds a way to beat Biden, uh, etc., then you're probably going to see McDaniel be rewarded, and then she's probably going to revert back to her more incompetent form, and they're going to drop the ball again for another three election cycles. So it's a train wreck. We need new leadership now. We got to keep McDaniel in check, Romney McDaniel in check as much as we possibly can ahead of 2024, and we need to just keep being the dissenting voices in the Republican Party to make sure that they cave into our demands while still being competent, while still being electorally savvy and doing everything they possibly can do to win so we can get the right people in power, so we can actually get the ball rolling in saving our country. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.